Hello, good morning. Good, good evening. Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm fine. Good evening. Good <laughs> evening. Yeah, yeah. 7.30 p.m. here in Melbourne. <laughs> how are you today? I'm fine. How are you too? I'm fine. I'm happy to see you. Thank you. Happy to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Today we have, um, at this, um, right now we have around nine participants. So that's very exciting. We have Dominic, we have um, Lamek, we have Jeffrey, Tara, Rasa, um, Ellie, William. Well, I don't, I don't know if I'm mispronouncing that. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's very exciting to see you here. And today we will be um, doing a presentation about some books. Um, um, presenting um, on behalf of the organization and also Avi will be presenting another part. Um, so let, uh, let's start. Uh, Avi, could you please share the presentation with us? Okay, I will. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'm doing that now. All right, thank you so much. So, all right, can you make it bigger? Um, okay. The full screen. Okay, I'll do that now. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. Is it better now? Okay, well, yeah. Okay. Everyone can see from there. All right, so um, my name is Maria Rojas. I'm the program manager of Sandbooks. I'm very, very glad uh, that you guys join us uh, today for this meeting. Um, we are in, Bel in Melbourne. Our main office of the World Literacy Foundation is located in Australia, in Melbourne. Uh, but we also have um, our different projects running in Africa, in South America, um, in Europe and the United States. So yeah, today we will be, we'll be, be presenting about the project in Africa. Um, and thank you everybody for joining us. Um, so um, with us is also Abby. She is the uh, director program um, of uh, Nigeria, Sandbooks. And we also have Lamek, who is um, the leader of uh, Sandbooks in Kenya. And Carolina, who is our marketing coordinator. Okay, so uh, this is Sandbooks. We are an initiative from the World Literacy Foundation. And uh, our main focus is um, technology and um, education, literacy. Um, Abby, can you move it? Uh, can you move, um, can you pass to the second slide? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So mainly today we will be talking about what is some books in general. Uh, we will also talk about how to join this community and the implementation stages, and also we will have um, some time for questions. So Sandbooks is a purpose-built solution for the off-the-grid learner. So we mainly focus on literacy education uh, in remote areas, remote locations, um, 
in uh, these different um, locations in Africa. So we started our program in Uganda, a small region in um, Gulu. And also we started then after, uh, so the program started around um, seven years ago with a small pilot stage. And after we were moving to some other locations such as Jinja and uh, uh, Kajunga in Uganda. And we are now also implementing this project in South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, and Zimbabwe. And we are also um, we are also doing a pilot stage in Ghana, which is a country in South America. This is a English speaking country, and that's why we also decided to implement the project there. So we have um, three main aspects for the project implementation. And one of it is technology, the other is uh, community and literacy. So for the technology, we use um, um, a 10 inch tablet, uh, which can be charged with solar panels. Um, especially like where we have these remote areas where there is even no light in the classrooms. So this has been a way to have a light and also to charge the tablets and to create and give this opportunity to have hundreds of books um, in a very um, useful and economic way. So that's about our hardware. For our software, we use um, uh, these and real software, which works on offline. So mainly what we do is we create the content uh, on this software, and then we download all our books and activities uh, on the tablets. So for that, of course, we need internet for the first time, but once it's there, once it's installed, uh, people can use it uh, without the need of internet. Um, there is, uh, but the other key element of the project is the community. So for the creation of the content, we have taken into account all the cultural aspects of these countries. Um, so like the different activities and games have been created considering that aspect and also the teachers and uh, sometimes the kids have been, create, have been the creators of the books and the content that we have there. So um, uh, with their collaboration, we have been able to um, um, develop around uh, 150 books and um, also um, activities for phonics and songs, uh, which are like the main uh, resources that we have on these tablets. Um, it's important to mention that we not only focus on English, but also on, la on local languages. And um, the books are in different uh, languages and uh, like most of the library is in English, but we encourage the communities also to uh, create books in on local languages. Um, so the library is um, very inclusive as well. And, um, and also like um, as a way to empower the communities for the creation of content and what like they can feel recognized on the on these different materials and um, things that are here on the tablets. Mm. Okay, so that's technology. Okay, so for like uh, what we the way that we uh, work with this software is. Um, uh, downloading the content on the tablets, but it can also be used on phones, so on or laptops. So, but most of the cases we use it on the tablets because, uh, yeah, like in the case of the teachers, they can use this app you know, on the phones and see the teachers' resources aspect in which we have the curriculums and some other key materials for the teachers and some strategies and struct and. Um, key ideas for teaching literacy. So that, that has been very helpful, especially for teachers having the um, sandbooks on their phones or uh, on the tablets, which is mainly used by the kids. 
So like the way that we, um, uh, we deliver this, we get the tablets and we send them directly to the countries. And uh, the tablets um, have also a cover case. Um, can you, uh, Evie, can you change the slide? Thank you, that one. All right. So we use this cover case to protect the, the tablets. And um, right now we are using Lenovo tablets, which is very high quality. And um, we try to also provide this speaker uh, so children and uh, the communities can um, use these resources as well. Um, well, so um, another uh, important, thank you. Um, so like we have different ways for joining uh, the community. And um, right now we have this, we have created this platform. It's a teacher's platform. And also we have encouraged our volunteers to use and to learn about Sandbox through this platform. So we have created these eight modules. And in here, you will find some different, uh, different details about the, uh, uh, the whole project and the organization. So for example, in um, the first module, you will find like some details about literacy around the world, about what is the World Literacy doing, like the different programs that we have, and uh, some videos from uh, people from the organization as well. Uh, the second module is the introduction to some books. So here it's like something similar to what I'm talking today, uh, short videos and also some manuals about the implementation and the, dif the different stages that we have and also, oops, and we also have um, in these modules like um, different resources in order to um, uh, understand like the different stages and the uh, protocols that we use for the implementation. Um, on number three, we have now with the tablets. So this is specifically about the content, uh, the types, the type of books that we have. Um, like for example, right now we have a library of three with three different levels. Um, so they are divided into three colors, yellow, red, and orange. So each of the level has a um, difficulty in English and um, it has like the, the basic one, it has some words and some uh, voice recording and so some very simple sentences. Level number two has more constructed uh, sentences and paragraphs and level number three has longer uh, stories. So all the, all the content, um, it's related to African culture. We have a partnership with African storybooks and they have provided, provided us many of the books, but also some others have been created by the communities. Um, so on the tablet, we also have a special edition for each of the countries in which we are implementing the project. In which specifically we upload the stories that have been created by the teachers or the students. So each of the countries that are participating can learn from um, each other culture through these books. Uh, so this of course comes with uh, some workshops for writing the stories in the classrooms. So in this module, you will be you will be able to see this uh, development and the different and explore the different uh, libraries that are on these tablets. Um, number four, pedagogical strategies. So mainly here we have some uh, tips and things that are um, very useful for teachers. And sometimes we ask our leaders and uh, project uh, developers to record some sessions so the others can learn how the implementation is going uh, and how and what else, what different uh, things you can uh, also do or uh, duplicate or implement or adapt or adopt in your classroom. Um, this, um, this is also, this content is also uploaded on the tablets. So uh, this platform can be used online because it has been designed for teachers uh, or for the volunteers. Or, um, but they, it can, they can also find these on the tablets in case there is no internet. 
So these are like uh, for uh, uh, model number five, we have content creation. So here it's mainly all related to Tendril. And uh, like it's especially used by the volunteers who have been doing this um, amazing work of uh, putting all the things that are sent by the communities on this platform. So they are in charge of uh, uh, putting together the text, the images in a, a nice and interesting way for the, for the children. Uh, so in this model, um, there are like different videos in which we explain how the software works and how to create the content. So we uh, invite the teachers as well to be part of that. Um, there has been, of course, some challenges because of the internet, especially in, like, in remote locations. But one thing is that with the COVID-19, um, like before, we never imagined using uh, internet for uh, directly, like, I mean, like having Zoom meetings and doing all these kind of things with our remote locations. But after COVID, that was the only way that we have to communicate. So right now they have learned to use the uh, they have learned to use the Zoom. They have learned to use these different platforms. And uh, right now we're connecting um, and having even some interactions with the schools and with different uh, communities in these remote, remote areas. So um, they, um, we have overcome this challenge and uh, we are now able to involve more the teachers on the content creation as well. Uh, number six, so it's all, the, all about impact measurement and um, some of our goals um, for the project. Number seven is Sandbooks community. So the, in here, we have the steps for the implementation of the program, like the diff, like uh, Abidun will talk about this in, in a moment. And uh, we have here all the formats and, formats and things that we use for the implementation. For example, a mem the memorandum of understanding, um, we also have the equipment equipment uh, agreement uh, or some other um, important uh, like the consent forms for photos and all the kind of resources. So all these it's on this uh, model. And number eight is member direct directory. So mainly it's about connecting and knowing who is involved and who, like all these new people that we have for the program and can be part of this community. So if you if you would like to um, have access to these, so that's like the first step to um, start uh, being part of this is request, you can request a username. So we will type here the email where you can send that, that request and we will um, create a, a user for you to have access to these and go like step by step on that. Um, all right. So now Emidun is gonna talk about the implementation. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maria. That was wonderful. Thank you. So we we implement our Sombus project in four main stages in all our locations. We don't just go there and put our things and start working we make sure that we do things step by step in order to be productive. So the first stage we run is our exploration stage. During this stage, we want to visit the site. We go there to go and see the location, how it looks like, oh, we, we, are we going to be productive here? If we run anything in this school, how will be, okay, what will be the, the, the impacts on the children, on the teachers, on the community at large? So we want to go there to go and check, oh, is this place a productive one for us? Because in some books we run with, uh, we run with fundings from our partners, from well many individuals. And so we don't want to waste our resources. We want to make sure that whatever we are doing at every point in time, we are being productive. And so for the exploration stage, we run a kind of visit to this location to go and check if it would be a viable one for us. Then after the exploration stage, which might run for around three months, we begin a pilot stage. During this pilot stage, we are also still checking if, the, if that location is really a good one for our Songbooks project, because we know that we are addressing a very important issue, education, literacy. We know that there are, there are children out there that must be impacted. 
there are teachers out there that must be impacted. And so we want to be so careful to make sure that whatever we are doing at every point in time, we are doing it with vision, we have visions, we have goals, and all these things are being achieved without struggle. And so during the pilot stage, we, 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 we go into the school with few tablets. During the exploration stage, you might maybe go there with six tablets, but for the pilot stage now, we would increase the tablets and we, we believe that we want to make more impact at this stage. And so when we begin the pilot stage, we will still, be, we'll still check over again with the teacher, with the students, we train our teachers on, on how to use our tablets, we work with the students, their storytelling, we, we, we impact as, as much as possible, we make sure that that project is running productively, productively very important for us in some, in some books. And so we keep checking again during the pilot stage. We, 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 we run the pilot stage for a full term. The exploration stage spans within five or six visits. Just go and check, go and train these teachers. Go, go back to check them. Two weeks later, what are, what are we still doing? We go back to go and check. But for, the, for this pilot stage, it runs for three months. Full will be fully in the school with the students and the teachers. And so we are training the teachers. We are, we are co-teaching literacy in the classroom. We are checking with the head of school. We are, trying to, we, are, we are trying to see if there is an impact. And one thing that we do in this stage is that we, 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 we believe in the fact that we want to see if learning is really taking place. And so when we get there, there is a kind of assessment that we, that we do for those children. We assess them to know their literacy level. We assess them to know, oh, can this one read? Can this one write? Or can this one identify English alphabet? Can this one identify letter sounds? Can this one pronounce the sound? And so we do this assessment to check if these children are really on the level we want them to be. And so after then, we move into the stage. And at the end of the stage, again, we want to check, oh, has learning taken place? As this, have they been able to move from point A to point B? This one that couldn't read before, or can he or she begin to read right now? This one that, could, that couldn't do it so well, or is, is she reading now? Is she identifying English alphabet now? Can she pronounce the sounds now? Can this one write stories at this time? And so you want to keep checking if we are really making impact. And so after the pilot stage, I think the pilot stage would have given us an overall view of that location. And that's when we are going to determine if we are going to stay in that place or not. If the education system being run in that location is not favorable for us, we are not going to stay. We are going to move to another place. It may cost us going to another place to go and start another pilot stage or exploration stage, no problem with that, because we want to make sure that we are being productive. We must make impact. We must be fruitful in everything we do at a particular point in time. And so at the end of the pilot stage, we check, can we stay here or should we move? We assess the impact. We assess the level of, the co level of commitment of the teachers, of the students, of the head of school. We want to know, should we continue in this location or should we move? If we come to a conclusion that, yes, this location oh, was a good one for us in the exploration stage, during the pilot stage was a very wonderful one, oh, we are going to stay there and continue the project. But if we cannot see any, any, any impact, if, we cannot, if, if it was a struggle for us operating in that location for those times, for the exploration and pilot stage, we are going to move out of that location and look for a place where we are going to make impact and be productive. And so at the end of the pilot stage, if we, if we make a conclusion of staying in a, in a location, then we move to the implementation stage. The implementation stage runs for about one year. We are fully on ground. We bring in more tablets again. Maybe we, we, we might have done the exploration stage maybe with six tablets, pilot with 10 tablets, but now we can bring in 40 tablets, 50 tablets to the school. And so all the children in the school, they have access to those tablets, all the teachers have access to the tablets. They are trained. We make sure that on a, on a weekly basis, these teachers are trained. We make sure that we, we co-teach, go to the classroom, go and co-teach, we supervise. What, okay, okay what, what is today's topic? What do you need about it? We make corrections, make adjustments, and make sure that learning is really taking place. And so for our implementation stage, we are fully on ground in the school because we are very sure that, yes, we can make impact right here. The students and teachers, they've been so committed. And so we are willing to stay with them for another one year to make sure that this project runs so well. And so for the implementation stage, we stay there fully on ground with the teachers for one year. And so after the implementation stage, we, we, we again assess 
we again assess the impact of the, of whatever we have done for that one year because we want to make sure that for every step we take once again the learning is taking place the teachers are beginning to to, to are beginning to see literacy effectively in the classroom the learners are beginning to read what they're beginning to pronounce they're beginning to do things so very productively and so we assess what has been the impact? What were the challenges? What were the struggles? How can we address this moving forward? How can we make a change moving forward? How can we make sure that things go on well more than ever before? And so after we might have made the assessment, then we move to the sustainability stage. In some books, we believe in sustainability. It's not just going to a place, drop the tablet, after the, after the project, we move out and we go. No, there is a sustainability stage in which all the resources we might have used during the other three stages would now be left in the school with the teachers and the head of school. They are now the people that will be in charge. We'll just come in once in a while to come and check, oh, are they implementing this well? Oh, these are tablets and all sorts. Are they using these things very well? What will we come in again to come and find out any challenge, any problem? Is there anything you want us to, to still do for you? What can we still do to help you move this forward? Because we believe that we, we our, our impact should not just span for one year, which also means that when, if those tablets is, is put in the school with the teachers and the head of school, meaning that even children that are coming from year to year in, year in, year out of the school, they will, be, they will have access to these tablets. And so which means that if the school can maintain all these resources so well, oh, maybe to... To, we don't know to, um, to, to, to for so many years they will keep benefiting from this project. This project will keep being of benefit to them. And so for the sustainability state, we watch them. We come once in a while. We we'll visit to check our resources. Is it going on well? Head of school, any problem? The teachers. And what they will do at this stage also is that we we which would which would we would have done from the beginning is that we are going to have a teacher leader which will commit this project or the, the, the project into the into the end of that person. And so the leader gives us the report. Maybe we will we'll, we'll decide to ask for a report on a weekly basis, on, on a monthly basis to ask, oh, how has it been going? And so for, for our project, for our some project in any location at all, we run it in four stages, the exploration stage, the pilot stage, implementation stage, and then lastly, the sustainability stage that happens even when we are out of that school. They come in once in a while to check if things are still going on well. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Avi, so much for that. Um, well, so I have written here on the chat the email that you can uh, send as a request for the platform. Um, yeah, so as A.B. was mentioning about these different stages for the implementation, um, yes, it's, um, this has been a way, like, a learning process, and, um, like, from uh, the very beginning, we have understand that it is very, very important to develop a community um, in which we have trust and in which we can um, learn from each other and accept like the different perspectives, the, um, the different uh, cultural aspects and the different uh, school, school cultures that are in each place because it's it's very different. Like the implementation in Nigeria has been has been completely different to the implementation in in Uganda in rural areas. So um, we have uh, we started in in rural rural areas, but then we also start seeing the option of some um, uh, areas that like um, are like a little like a little bit. Uh, uh, they also have lack of resources. So like in the cities, like in the case of Lagos, in in this area, but we saw that. Uh, in the cities, it sometimes it's a little bit more challenging, um, especially like because we we like working on with public with public schools, but depending on the governments, sometimes the governments they have their own very strict um, curriculum and they are not very flexible on having new things or to have or, or having um, 
like um, like they, sometimes they, they see that these can interrupt their sessions or the classes. So this depends on the culture and the um, the perspective of the curriculum that they have. So these have been some some of the challenges that we have. So, however, we uh, that's why we saw the importance of uh, flexibility. So uh, in each place we have to see and to, of course, hear the different voices of the stakeholders and identify which is the best uh, way to uh, implement the project. So if it's rural, we actually prefer rural locations and uh, um, um, yeah, like rural locations because we find that these are the places in which there is much, much more needs. There are more, more needs. And also because, um, well, like the tablets and the solar panels will be more suitable for these areas. However, like in some, like we, we have to see like in the other areas, what are the needs and what are the expectations um, that are in place. So for that exploration stage, we definitely analyze these different aspects. And also like we run some um, sessions with the teachers, some training sessions and some um, Zoom meetings in which we also hear the voices in terms of the expectations because what happened at the beginning was that some teachers might think that this will solve the issue, like the tablets arrived to the classroom and now we have literacy and now the problem is solved. However, we have um, encouraged them and we have transmitted the message that the tablets is a resource. Um, and uh, this is, um, yeah, it's a very good resource that can help the process of, of learning and educating these children. But the, anyway, the, teachers still have a really, really important role and they are the ones who are uh, implementing these and they are the ones who are uh, working with the kids. So that's why bringing like um, clarifying this from the very beginning, it's very um, helpful in terms of the expectations and um, learning like in this exploration stage, if the teachers haven't used before any kind of these devices, it's important for them to have like a time in which they can start using the technologies, um, like appropriate the use of this, because if they have that, if they understand what are the benefits of this, they will of course use it with the kids. But if they don't, they probably will put them aside and it's, there is no purpose of that, on that. So the idea is that they can develop this um, sensibility and also um, like uh, learning some strategies of what to do with these tablets. So uh, for example, like it, we could have like some strategies for uh, diversification or for uh, like modeling or working groups on what different things we, we can do for encouraging reading and also writing. Um, Definitely, we understand that literacy is not only about reading and writing, but also like from a more social linguistic perspective to understand different contexts and all different and to be critical about images and about uh, the content that the children receive. So these other elements are also uh, critical in, in terms of, of literacy, and we have been trying to encourage um, that aspect as well. So it's if it's of course a, a process um, that it's developed with the teachers and uh, subsequently with the students. Um, so maybe would you like to add something on that aspect as well on the part of the pedagogies and um, the strategies? Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you for that. So what we do now is that, you know, we, we go into the schools to go and train these teachers on how to teach literacy effectively with the use of our tablets. And so there are certain things we do to, to make sure that these teachers are well equipped. One thing that we do is that during our training, we make them to see the, the, the basic things that the student must know if they'll be able to read, write, and communicate effectively. Personally, I make sure that I take them to the basis, the foundation, 
things that will determine if a child will really be able to read, write, or communicate effectively. I take these teachers to the basis. I take them to letter A. Every reading for every child starts with the letter A. And so I take them through the letter names, the letter sounds. I make sure that those who, because we be, because actually we have teachers that don't have enough knowledge of the sounds of this English alphabet. They're in the classroom, they are teachers employed by the government, but many of them, some of them don't really know the basis, don't really know what they should teach those students. And so some of the students don't know how to read because these teachers are not well equipped to teach them effectively, they are not well equipped to pass the right knowledge to them. And so personally, I take them to the letter names, I teach them all the sounds, what they must know. Then after them, we go to blending. These are trainings that these teachers also go through to make sure that these two children are well equipped in the classroom. Because if the teachers don't have the right knowledge, then they can't pass the right thing to the children in the classroom. So I make sure that, yes, if we go through the sounds, we go through this alphabet together, we start to blend after blending, we start to, after then we, 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 are, we are taking sounds together, we are combining sounds. Oh, so this, for this letter, this is the sound for teachers that we don't really know. Like when I quote it in the classroom, I find out that some of these teachers don't even really know what this is. And so I try to put them to, this, this is the right sound for this, for this aspect. This is the right pronunciation. This is the right thing to be done when you get to this particular stage to teach those children. And so one thing which I've, which I've said before is that when we come into the school, we have what we call the baseline test and the end line test. So even before these teachers are trained, we make sure that all the children they are handling in the classroom, they pass through this baseline test. We administer this baseline test on the street on those children. It, it contains the, the, the letter name, the letter sounds, the read, reading, action of comprehension, comprehension passages, pronunciation of some words and all that. So we keep the results of this baseline test. We keep it and maybe after three months, after some weeks, we want to still find out what has what has taken place as this child been able to improve for, on his reading or writing ability. And so after maybe three months or six months, we come again, we, we, we administer this the, the, the same test, which we now call the end line test to see if, if to see if learning has really taken place or not. And so these teachers are taking through this, this process. Then for, for the content on our tape that which we mainly deal with at Sunbooks, these teachers are also taking through the content on those tablets one after the other. So where will you go if you need this resource? If you are teaching this topic in the classroom, which aspect are you going to consult? Where, are you going to, where will you go to on this tablet to see the, the sounds, to see games for those children? Because we believe that learning must be fun. If the student would, would, would be able to learn at all, they must do so with joy. They must learn with fun. There must be moments where they are able to sing and dance. On our table, we have songs of the English alphabet. We have different songs where the student can play. They can, they, while, while learning, they can decide to dance. Even while pronouncing all those words, they can decide to dance. They can decide to do so many fun activities. On our table, we have, we have games on, on some particular aspect. Now, this educational game, not just any kind of game, educational games, these are games that we put together for maybe when under, under a vocabulary aspect, games on, on vocabularies on school, on, on cleanliness, on environment, on hygiene, on COVID, how to, how to take care of yourself during this COVID period and all that. These are things you have put together to make sure that these children, while they are learning, they are also, they are also having some fun and they are having joy doing so without any form of struggle at all. And so we take these teachers through all the content of the tablet. On our tablet, we also have aspect for teacher resources. These are areas where the teachers can go to go and read how to teach phonics, how to teach the students sounds, how to teach them how to read. We also take them through that aspect and then we move to our activity, our, to our library. On our tablet, we have more than 600 ebooks where this where these teachers can assess them, and this student can also assess the, the, the e-books on, on the table. We take them through these e-books. Oh, so this is this is a book that has 500 words, a book that has 200 words, a book that has 100 words. You want one of 100 words, go for the primary one. You want for 200 words, go for primary two in Nigerian context now. You want for 500, 300 words, go for maybe primary three to primary six. But depending on the literacy level of the student, I also tell my teachers that you can use a book in level one to teach those in basic six. 
It all depends on your reading ability. A child in basic six who cannot read well might find it hard pronouncing words in the in a book that in a book of level three. And so you can bring that child down to level one to begin to read, to begin to communicate, or to begin to learn some simple words that will transcend into pronouncing more difficult words in future. And so we make sure that all these teachers are taking to the content on our tablet. So they are they they, they, they they become versed in the content. And so they are also able to, so when they are teaching their children literacy in the classroom, they could undo this, this tablet, oh, go to the social place on the tablet. We want to teach this son, go to the song of letter E, or let's go to the activity of letter E and all that, which is very, very important to us. And so even the children now come to a state that they don't need to even be, be told, okay, when once you say letter E, they know where to go on the tablet. Because as they keep using those tablets, they, be, they become versatile about the knowledge of, of, of the content of this tablet. And so they are able to assess this content without struggle. I have to them that once they handle this tablet, they know where to go. They want to go to vocabulary, they want to play, they want to play some games, they know where to go when they want to go and play some games and all that. They know where to go when they want to go and do some things, or when they want to learn sounds, children that will, oh, so the, to, something I've, I've said that, oh, I love this story book, I love this book. And when they want to get to the story book on a the tablet, they do not to just go to the story book without any form of struggle. So even as we are we are we are teaching them how to read, write, and communicate, technological wise, digital wise, we are also building those children. We are also building their skill, digital wise, their digital skill is also being built while we are teaching them how to read, write, and communicate effectively. And so one aspect that also we also base on, on the, for the student is story writing story writing very very important because we want to build the writing skill of our truth they want to build to sit to think creatively and bring out the story out of what your people might have thought about we want to be able, we want to be able to make sure that the student can express themselves in writing without any struggle and so i also train these teachers on how to on how to teach children how to write stories in the classroom but when we get there we have, in as much as we want them to read to communicate, we also want them to, to we also want them to be able to teach children to write stories. We also we also sit down with children in the classroom as okay, we want to write a story. We, we give them some form of guidelines. So we okay, this, this is an idea of what you can write, write on this particular idea. So after writing it, we also bring them to the table. I check, okay, so. This spelling is not correct, you know, write it like this, let's recompose the sentence and all that. It makes sure that we take the student through all, so that in future they could they, they can boldly stand to write their own stories, publish their own stories. And one thing about some books is that we have an aspect on the table that is called my books. My books contain books written by children from the communities where this project is run. And so once the children write, we publish their stories on our tablets. In fact, when they illustrate, when they draw whatever they might have written, we make sure that we, we, we publish their drawing the same way. Either, either it seems beautiful or not beautiful to them, they see their exact drawing on the tablet. They see their drawing, they see whatever they have written on the tablet all with a touch of creativity to make sure that those children can stand themselves, they can stand themselves to write stories, they can stand themselves to communicate well. And so by this, we are also encouraging our children to make sure that they can stand well in future and now one in future to write, to read and communicate effectively. So pedagogical wise, we make sure that we take them through that aspect of sounds, which is very important for children that will be able to read effectively. We take them through sounds activities. And one thing I also mentioned is that some books we are we, we really do literacy, but our tablets can also be used to teach other subjects like health education, like basic science, environmental science, because on those tablets we have vocabularies that have to do with this subject. If you want to teach hygiene, we have vocabularies on hygiene, vocabularies on the on environment, vocabularies on, on, on traffic, like traffic signs and all that. Everything is on the same. We could pick up this tablet and use, use it to teach other subjects in the classroom. And so pedagogical wise, we are trying our best to make sure that these, these teachers are well equipped, learners are well equipped with the, with the literacy skill they need to excel now and in times to come. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much, Heidi. Yeah, you have given us a 
very like nice example of uh, like these different um, strategies and uh, like adaptations as well that happen in the different countries. And um, yeah, it's one thing that uh, it's very interesting is the way of uh, adapting and using what the sometimes the ministry and the um, departments of education expect and like in terms of, of literacy and the levels and somehow trying to um, achieve and support those goals. So it has it has been yeah an, an opportunity of uh, uh, at least learning and also exploring uh, with them and how we can actually do this together. Uh, good. So we have some questions here. Um, one of it is um, about the certification of this event. So actually we will provide certifications for the um, teachers platform. So you can request um, a username on the email that we just sent here. And uh, it's a module that it takes around uh, one hour and a half to develop all the modules. And um, each module has a certification and then you will have a final one. Um, additionally, okay, we will have a recording. Yeah, we will be sending also the recording in the newsletter. If you subscribe to the newsletter, or if you already are there, so you will receive the recording and the presentation of this one. There was a person raising their hand. I don't know if still there but we have some couple of minutes for questions anyone hi hello, hello? yeah you can speak on your clip hi tara okay. hi uh, i'm tara i um run a charity called the salt fund education project and we run a school in Ghana. Uh, so we have a primary school and we're just in the process of building a junior high, high school. Uh, so I just wanted to know what this, the next steps would be after signing up to the platform um, for putting the school forward to be part of the program. Oh, that's right. So yes, as we mentioned, so we start with this exploration. We have also a um, link that we can send to you through our administrative support uh, team. And in this link, there is just some simple questions regarding the, like it's just because we want to know more about the location, like um, information of where is the school, is a public, is a private, do you guys have internet? What, like, so that give us a picture of the location. And after we arrange a meeting with the leader of that place, and then we start uh, seeing the options for the exploration and we start with when we start we always start with just few tablets um be one or two to start like training the teachers so we also involve the teachers in the training and they will have to go through these different models for them to understand and of course after going through the models they will come back with questions that's like the best way. And after, yeah, we can have like a meeting together in order to start uh, discussing and see in this location, how would be the implementation and what would be our like expectations and the steps to, to go further. Um, uh, yeah, we, we work we, through a memorandum of understanding in which we have like all the different, uh, like all these expectations and different aspects, we put it on a memorandum of understanding. And um, after the exploration, we um, we will start the piloting <laughs> and potentially apply, like we expect, like looking for different grant opportunities, uh, either with uh, the Australian government, uh, there are usually many from the Australian government um, and also from the UK. So we start looking from different uh, uh, grant opportunities for the countries. That's how we like uh, grow grew the project in Kenya, for example. So it was just like a small uh, exploration, and then um, after a year, we got a grant for Kenya, and right now we are on that. So yeah, that will, those will be like so uh, the steps. And do you already operate in Ghana? No, no, in Ghana, but we will be happy to go to Ghana. That would be okay. yeah, amazing. And so is there so you were mentioning grant opportunities. So is there a, a cost from the side of the 
um, participants or do you help do work do we work together to get grants to implement the project yes exactly yes okay. we, we work yeah so okay. yeah but the, like in the exploration we send the tablets directly uh, to the places and as maybe mentioned as we uh, like we get to know more about each other and sure. we see if we really are like uh, we have a match for <laughs> implementing yeah. the projects that's that's we keep going for the next so after this um i'll just send an email to the email address you said and then you'll send a link to further questions or Is that how it? okay great thank you so much sure. <laughs> if you can also write here your email you type your email so we keep it in, in into account so we are collecting all these emails as well to uh, to yeah to have a further conversation with you guys as well through emails Thank you for that question. Hello. Hello. Hi, Richmond. Yeah, my name is Richmond. And uh, uh, because uh, you are now talking about Ghana, so I've decided to uh, chip in. Um, my organization is actually, my name is Richmond Smith. And uh, I'm one of the co founders of uh, Heritage Charity Foundation. And uh, what we do is we we have uh, adopted uh, uh, 20 rural schools in the uh, Sunyane, Sunyane municipality, that is in the Bono region. Um, the earlier speaker uh, made it known to us that uh, she's uh, running a school in Ghana. I'm sure maybe she might he head of uh, Bono region or Sunyane. Yeah, so we have adopted these schools in the rural communities. These schools are very deplorable schools. So what we do is we solicit for educational uh, materials and distribute to these schools so they can also have access to um, then uh, you know learning materials, teaching and learning materials. Yeah. So just as uh, the earlier speaker said. Uh, um, uh, of course, you have already spoken about uh, the possibilities of partnering with uh, Sandbox. So I just want to also add uh, my uh, project, if there is any possibility for those of us in Ghana, so you can include us also. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Richmond, for bringing that, those questions and that request. Um, yes, I, I think right now we have uh, already um, moved to um, multiplication of the experience. So it's scale to um, being able to bring these uh, sandbooks to different countries. And that's a, that's a good thing because when we, we work through grants, so when we um, um, reach that point, like the grants uh, givers, like in, the, in this case, governments, um, we we have already been able to to get some of those and um we 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 as i was mentioning we have to see this different um uh, uh, options with each of the locations analyze if uh, that's the place that and that's the place as well for you is the program that you want to have in your community and that's the place that we want to implement this project and once we agree that we start and we start like for this exploration and then apply for a grant like it's it's something which we can definitely do together and we will be happy to start that journey with with you guys and um of course to keep bringing um building the community which i guess i no, i guess no, i believe that it's something that we have to do together we cannot do it alone and uh, something which um, we have learned as well is about connecting and also connecting the kids, connecting the children, the African kids from uh, rural communities with other kids in other uh, rural areas. So that has been a very beautiful experience. And um, I think even if we are not like uh, implement and bring in the tablets and all these kind of things, there are still other kind of things that we can do uh, until we get to that other stage. <laughs> but yeah, there, there, there might be other opportunities as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sure. So in this case, uh, what should we do? What should we start doing until we get there? What should we start doing now? 
Yes, for now, like um, if you guys can send us your email here and then we will um, be sending the usernames and also we will send you an email with uh, the link that I was mentioning about uh, the information regarding each location, like some specific data, like numbers of students, numbers of teachers, uh, what um, uh, what is the level of literacy of the children? So some some data that help us to get a picture of the school and the the areas and also like the people who the leaders who are running either the organization or the school and uh, that's after when we uh, arrange a meeting um, like a, a proper meeting in which we can discuss uh, further how we can uh, start. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I just uh, sent my our email address to the chat to the chat box, so maybe you can see it. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I see it here. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um... And uh, one more thing, uh, the other speaker who said uh, she's running a school in Ghana. I don't know if she can link up with me. I'll be glad. Yeah, is that a, yeah, maybe you guys can connect each other. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, making connections. Fantastic. All right, guys. So, yeah, time flies. Um, so I want to say thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we are going to keep running these webinars every month. Uh, we expect to start this amazing journey with you. Oh, we have one question more. Hello, Mon. <laughs> Yeah, uh, good morning, everyone. I I kind of missed out the time because uh, I, I thought the 10.30 West Africa time was supposed to be a time in the Gambia. So I cannot mix up the whole thing. I'm so sorry for joining in late. And uh, I think I missed out all the presentation. And uh, it would be, I don't know if we will have the opportunity to uh, get the recorded video, if it's possible. I mean, the participant. But... Uh, this thing is something that I'm so much passionate about because our organization, we work uh, to ensure that children, the less privileged children, have access to good quality education. Uh, there are various projects that we have that are currently ongoing, part of which is a mobile library project, which is designed to create children access to good quality, uh, quality materials, learning materials. And uh, including the digital, uh, the some books into it would be a, a really fantastic one, which most kids are quite interested when it comes to the area of digital. And uh, we actually want to expose them in that area as well. So uh, I'll be so much, we'd be very much interested to work in collaboration with uh, some books to ensure that children in the Gambia have access to this uh, resource materials. So uh, I just joined in when the last person was asking questions. I will be glad to share our email address with you, our contact, as well as get in touch with you to see how best we could work uh, to ensure that children, who especially those at the rural area in the Gambia, benefit, uh, uh, benefit from some book. So it's a great opportunity joining. Thank yeah. you so much, Salomon. Uh, yeah, that's uh, incredible. And uh, definitely there are like, uh, we would like to have the opportunity to know more about your work and the resources that you guys have been created. Um, we actually have some partners and we will be happy to have more, more partners in which we can share uh, content and especially because it's cultural relevant con content. Um, mm. And yeah, we will be happy to know more about it. So uh, please uh, share with us your email and we will be in contact with you. Okay, thank you. We also have Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey, okay. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, guys. So, um, um, thumbs up. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. And please 
stay in touch. Um, follow us in our social media. And um, we have news and we share there some photos and um, like coming events. We are going to have a literacy uh, day um, in the coming month. And it's going to be an event in which we'll be doing a readathon in which kids from different places and people from different places are going to be reading stories and we will be sharing these as well. Um, so please uh, join us and follow us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram um, to have some news about us. <laughs> so thank you and have a beautiful day and see you next time. Thank you so much for joining us. This International Literacy Day, share your love and appreciation of reading with a disadvantaged child who doesn't own a single book. Please visit worldliteracyfoundation.org and donate today. Thank you.